So, in the first part of the talk, we have we present the project itself, the, the let's say the um, the framework in which this stock was let's say organized for the live public in the, 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 the big scheme. I would like to start this this this, this part with two sentences to to part to let's say phrase that I found the uh, let's say all of my my, my, my careers about mathematician and they wanted to really I think in the well they say that mathematics are the lens by which we see reality. I this one for the uh, myth called biofluid that we used to have in Apple, but it doesn't exist anymore. In that meeting, they also discuss uh, bio, uh, mechanically applied to, to to fluid. So it was uh, not just mechanic, uh, any kind of technique that was applied to fluids. And uh, it's interesting because we've met at the lens by which is reality, and it seems to be a very very exager exaggerated sense, but somehow it's true because even if you do not use mathematics in your life, most of the software, let's say all the software, computer based on mathematics somehow. So mathematics became now uh, one of the most important uh, error signs to whatever you want to call it that gave a huge contribution to our new understanding such as the fact that you cannot see more than three dimensions if you go further than, than three dimensions you have to use mathematics for that uh, geometry and so on and if you want to understand the dimension that we suggest then the nano nano dimension now you have received that last year there was a Nobel prize for a new kind of microscope but still believe that mathematics could be able to to be useful such as the fact that the uh, some simulation I did for example when I was my master was the photosecond photosecond is very slow so I think that happened that dimension we cannot see by naked eyes so mathematics even if Technology will evolve. I believe my pet could still be the lens of those that because you, you just have to be able to go further than technology. So I think my pet could always be important and useful. The second one is mathematics is the, the new microscope, however, even better. This one, I'm not remember what I saw it, but I saw it in a phone, I, I think it was a, a talk for like my small, but I'm not sure the reference. But in a uh, so it indeed the, the the nano dimension has been probed uh, uh, mainly by mathematics mathematics has been very useful to understand protein to understand the fold and so on and the and the, to understand the nano wire nano dimension uh, quantum mechanics so all of this has been done mainly by by mathematics so it's so the power of, math, of mathematics in the the micro the micro reality the second one that I like show it's a it's a, it's a, it's a cartoon. Uh, it was taken from this book, so you are, it's a very nice book about dynamic system in the science. It's a, it show, it, it's a book that is worth reading if you want to uh, let's say work with the if math math mod for for neuron. So the stories like a math petition go very happy to a biologist and, and tell him, I have the ultimate model for a neuron. The biologist is not is unable to see the neuron. He has what is the neuron? So that shows a problem at, that the, the biologist and doctor pro, has problems with mathematics and has problems to understand the discovery that the um, let's say a biologist is able to do. But the opposite is true as well. If, you, if, the, if the biologist comes to a mathematician and show um, a picture in which he in which there is a mathematical model, but there is no no no, no, no mathematics at all. They will, they will be unable to see. So the, the, the this this like this joke can be used in in, in both di both directions. So we have to destroy this wall between them. So the mathematician should learn more physiology. Should understand that mathematics is not the one that mathematical formula, mathematical model, are not the only way to do by mathematics. And the body should learn that the, there is a new world out there that trying to understand the same they are doing, but from a different way. So the two sides should 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 improve. Not just the biologist, neither not just the the mathematician. The both of them need to learn a lesson to go in order to make it to improve the biomathematics in general. So uh, 
Professor Manjo, uh, before we we uh, before I do I did the talk I two two days before we met I showed my my slides and uh, this part was a little bit more complicated and then he asked me please uh, give one definition this definition here I'm quite sure that it will not be uh, the ultimate definition but that the best I could come up um, so far based on my experience in the reading. So biomed for me is a systematic application. What is a what, uh, what do you mean by by systematic application? Because it has a, a, a way of application. It has a, a, a systematic approach. There is a, a, a it um, there's a pathway, a step by step. It's not like a random application. There is a kind of uh, law such as the the mass conservation, the energy conservation. It's a systematic. It's based on on, on theory or methodology so it's not a random like you taking a, a, meth, a, bi, a biological problem a, me, a medical problem that apply, apply mathematics from nowhere in general we follow rules those rules come from physics or maybe can be if it come from biology but uh, uh, there are rules that uh, were tested somehow accepted by the literature So mathematical physical approach, we sometimes call it mathematical physics, is can want to say that the, the mathematics is not alone. So the mathematical model should be based on some kind of principles, such as the fact that the, you have the, the the concentration from the high from the high concentration solution to the small concentration. It's, a, it's a, the direction of the passive passive flow. So the, it's a physical law. That is represented by mathematics. So not every not e not every mathematical uh, approach has a physical meaning, but most of the physical meaning has a mathematical approach. So that's why you have should be careful to use the mathematical physical approach instead of just mathematical in order to decipher the life science. So every mathematical model has a aim to decipher, to understand something. You do not do mathematics just because you have, want to have fun. Of course, someone will do that, but in general, we, we have a reason. So the ultimate goal is also achieve new understanding, such as we, uh, we understand why a protein uh, is, act is active in situations, not active in the old situation. It happens a lot in, in the body. Some protein they are active, for such as the blood, but they are not active outside of the blood. Or the opposite is true as well. They are active in a specific environment, such as the liver, but not active in the blood. Such as, if it's another nice example, because if you try to design drugs to hit a specific point, we should be careful to, 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 to nullify side effects. And the best way to do that is to, to understand exactly how the body works, such as the, your drug not be active in the blood, in not case side effect in the, in the bloodstream. But you, you achieve exactly the tumor or the cancer that you are trying to model. Of course, most of this is still a futuristic idea, but uh, if you work hard for that, I believe you can, you can get there. The, the project itself is, is concerned about what's called white box. I'm going to explain that. But mainly white box are models in which you have to understand or, uh, of what's going on. Black box is when you do not know. You have a mathematical model, such as the, the regression model, artificial, you have to work a fuzzy system such as based on artificial intelligence, that you don't know what's going on, but the mathematical model works, but you don't know exactly how to explain that. So it's called, in general, people like to call it to black box. So in our case, we're in, the, in the project, we're going to work just with the white box, white box because we, we are going to build models that uh, are built to understand something. So it's called white box. So this part here as well, you can find the video, explain that. But I'm going to repeat again just for completeness of this of the set of webinar. But if you go to the YouTube channel, you can find the or or done another video in which I, I discuss this part here. So it seems to have no serious attempt to pin down the original the or origins, the genesis of biomass, like because it's impossible. Uh, I have seen some people say that it started in the last century that he that he uh, tops on uh, la, uh, Lassie Dobson was the world scientist to create by math, but maybe it's true because he wasn't the first one to publish a very important book called the I think it was the the in the, in the form in growth. It was a very important book, but he, I believe that my, my pet started even before. So 
uh, if you click the start data entry as you have seen you have seen the work of Fibonacci you, you was trying to model the growth of rabbit and that's one example of that in my opinion so biometric is an abstract name I mean it's not that easy to say what is biometric it's very abstract but uh, it's an area that he can let's say that a fit everywhere so uh, it's a, it's it, it mainly it's a, in, in my point of view, biometric is more a philosophy than it's a, it's an air itself. So it's like it's it, it's a, it's a guiding line that you will the how you can treat by a problem medicine life science. So it was developed mainly in the last century, mainly because the problem. One of the reasons that that biology is a new name. Biology was mainly used in the in the 19th century. The name biology as we have today. It was developed, as scientists say, to understand life. That answer the question what is life. The physicist was asking what is life, but biologists want just to study life. That answer this big question. So, and the second reason is that the problem in, in biology, medicine, they are much more complicated than it is than it, than it is. Uh, then it is in, a, uh, in physics. So the problem could be just solved because we've developed computer. Most of the problem nowadays that you have in biomathematics and so on, they're solved by computer simulation. Then rarely you can find a case that you are lucky enough to solve it by hand. In the way you can solve it by hand, they're very specific case. They cannot be applied generally because uh, the trick that you have in, in physics in which I ah, start with you, uh, one sphere then the, the extension to any sphere is obvious. That's not true in, in biology medicine. So the fact that you start with two spheres does not mean that you'll be able to extend to any sphere. So that is the problem. The concept of emergent property that is very important in biology is not so common in physics. So biology emergent property is always the law. In physics, some, it can say that it's it, it, the exception. It includes a lot, but it's the exception somehow. So, Bankmet gives us several lecture, uh, luxury, such as you can automate, you can learn from simulation, you can join pieces to be sure you understand that uh, what you think, you can propose situation, you can propose hypothesis. Uh, why more? The more such as to understand, to manipulate, to make theories, to make science more precise. However, what can make their own read. So, the reason to more can be very, can be, uh, let's say, uh, very, very different. So, can be from one from the others. So uh, let's see. It's uh, uh, biometric cake. Uh, now they can be found in several flavors. So you choose yours. Uh, the difference between them is very diff is very difficult. It's very fuzzy. Different is that different, very difficult to say when uh, one one ends and the other one starts. So it's not very easy to 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 make the difference. So the best you can do is trying to find the, the key characteristics of, of of each of them. Some of them are very easy to differentiate because of such a system biology that has a specific that some characteristic that is very very peculiar from the era. But it's not that difficult. It's not very easy still to make the differentiation. So, uh, such as system biology is a biomathematic approach. It's a bit biomathematic step, but system biology, is, uh, in most of the case, is uh, that one works maybe one of the between system biology and mathematical biology, that most of the problems of system biology cannot be solved by hand. They, they, they have to do with emergent property. And the, most of the case, the unfortunately, cannot be understood by hand. You have to make complete simulation because they involve complex system and so on. So, system biology is almost, if you, if you try to find the definition of system biology on the internet, you find several definitions. Uh, most of them, I believe, all of them, we, we, we say that it's about emergent property. Because emergent property is a very important concept nowadays. Recently, like two years ago, I believe one year ago, two years ago, I wrote, I have written a paper, and the the the, the reviewer sent back asking to explain the chain property. When I try to explain, and I have the research to to make some reference, I realize how emergent property is a very confused concept. But in general, emergent property is a abstract uh, function that can be found just when the system interacts. So if you have for example, three gene working, then you separate them. There is a function on the three gene that cannot be explained by the by the by the single gene. It cannot be predicted. Just you put it to work together. So that's what called the emergent property. It's something that comes up from the, the interaction. Property treated by system biology cannot be understood from a, a reductionist. 
point of view, reduction, reduction of the picture. Uh, let's say that the 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 let's say the fight the fight word for us is like the sum of the parts less than the all. So if you if you sum the parts, you will be unable to predict the all. That's that's one of the consequences of emergent property. So it's study crude like cancer dynamic cellular communication. So a lot of, a lot of them, uh, let's say the classical biology was unable to solve. So it was missing a piece. So the biology is trying to prove all of them to tackle the problem to pursue the kind of 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 points that the biology left. Uh, hidden under the gap, under the the the, 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 uh, the let's say, under this uh, hidden because wasn't able to solve the problem. So uh, what distinguish it from other era of uh, of mathematics? The central role of connectivity. So in, in system biology, connectivity is very important. It's extremely important. So it's almost the law. So that was somehow distinguished from the from the others. So mathematical biology is a name that's very generic. Uh, it was developed mainly in the last century. So system biology is a new name. People say that it started like a, some the uh, like ten years ago with the public with the publication of uh, Hiroshi Kitano. If I'm not wrong about the name, but uh, you can already find this name already in a book by Capra thirty years ago. So uh, in the idea that Capra put was that close of system biology nowadays. So maybe system biology was was made developed ten years ago, but the name has already been around for a while. So originally it was concerned with population modeling, and some people was very skeptical regarding the applicability of this of this technique for uh, for a small uh, small systems such as cells. People did not they, they did, didn't believe it could be possible. But today system biology is doing that that was said impossible in the past. So now it's hard to separate mathematical biology from other such as system biology because now some people like to use system biology as a big name. Instead of using biomathematics, they like to use mathematical biology. Other people prefer computational biology. But anyway, uh, it's uh, just a matter of, of preference. Mathematical physiology is a name that is not very common. I found it just one time in my life. It was in a book. So you can find the book, and if you take a look at the book, you, f you see that the mathematical uh, physiology is more or less what what mathematical biology is doing. But I believe the author used mathematical physiology to 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 separate to separate, um, uh, let's say, what's physiology from what's anatomy because mathematical, bi mathematical biology, system biology, bioengineering, and so on, they treat problems that they not differentiate between physiology and anatomy. But you know that physiology and anatomy are different. So that's, I believe, the reason that the, 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 the author should have chosen the non -phys uh, mathematical physiology to be sure that the problem that is treated by is come from physiology are separate from the one that comes from anatomy. So bioengineering is a is, is a kind of bioengineering plus physics. It's more uh, physics driven. It's applied to let's say problems in general solved by engineering, such as design artificial organs, artificial pancreas. Understand that it require more than just mathematics. Bioengineering is a is a name that's quite close to bio bio uh, biomedical engineering is very close to bioengineering. But in general, the kind of problem that bioengineering is 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 is, is handling is more industrial. In general, bioengineering is more academic and biomedical engineering is more industrial. Examples like uh, there are a lot of re uh, rehabilitation, software, uh, the hardware, and so on. Biophysics is the biomathematics system of in, in physics, so it tends to be more biophysics tend to be more by by done by physicists or biologists that works with physics. So it tends to be more physics driven. So that the thing is very sad, it's very difficult to to, to, do, to do things. So that's why I like to call it biomathematics as a term to avoid the problem. But anyway, some people may want to differentiate. So you say that the bio biophysics could be more physical driven, to be more Concerned about the, the the loss of physics. So evolutionary computing in general is called also natural computing. In general, it's not classified as biomathematics. But if you do the math, if you see what they are doing is biomathematics. So synthetic biology has been called the granddaughter. I saw it recent last year in a in a meeting in Portugal, and I like that. It's like if you stop if you if you try to find the definition because I I in the in the past I had a problem to to, to differentiate between synthetic biology and system biology. And by this definition given by our author that he, uh, 
um, nem no top em Portugal, em uma conferência que eu participei, em parte de artificial intelligence medicine, e isso é verdade. By, uh, by doing the math, what I saw before and what he said makes sense. It is a very nice point of view. So, uh, synthetic biology is concerned about to do what system biology is not doing. It is more, more theoretical. Synthetic biology is more practical. So, that kind of key to sign of the coin. Bioinformatics is a very big name that uh, in general people even like to use bioinformatics instead of uh, bioinformatics, but uh, bioinformatics bio tends to be more computer science driven. So you see that the 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 differences are very different, difficult to 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 pin down. Theoretical biology is a name that I have if I if you do a research about books, most of the book that use the title theoretical biology comes from the like from the last from the last century from the from the end of the last century the publication that was so it means that the, I believe that biology was used mainly to at that time to make differentiation between between mathematicians and the biologists but now they believe as in the as, the, as the, uh, let's say step by step the mathematician admit the biologist the biologist admit the mathematician I think this kind of theoretical biology is, is the pure. But I think it's a good name because it can it can make it can make you to if you, if you want to make biology close in medicine close to physics, this theoretical biology can be used alongside theoretical physics, and that can be very nice. I believe want to give the not to give, uh, I think that's a, it's a that's a wonderful name that's supposed to be used more. Uh, it's better even than biomathematics, in my opinion. Dry by all is a kind of a kind of a name that if uh, people like to use it to differentiate from the wet by all. Dry by all is there is is by is any any approach that it does not use classical biology. People like to call it dry biology instead of, uh, to make a opposition to wet biology. In silico is a big name that used in general for any simulator use computer. So it's a kind of a uh, comparison between in vivo and in vitro. So uh, on this part, I would like you to to make a thought experiment. So let's suppose that he, uh, I invite you for a trip. You will go for a trip. Then you accept. Then I show you my car. You see that by by looking at this car, you know that the probability is very low. The odds that uh, we are going to be able to 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 go to the end of the trip is is, is very low. But if I show you my, 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 my car is one, the, the probability, the odds that you are going to arrive at the end of the trip are, are very high. So, uh, see that in this case of situation, we're able to judge the successfulness of a journal by the car, by, the, by the, how the car gives the confidence that you will be able to arrive to the end of the trip. But unfortunately, in mathematics, it's not always possible, especially in biology, when you're in biomathematics. You can, there's no way for sure, to know for sure that a mathematical model will work. Uh, some scientists try to develop the ways, such as Einstein, like to say that uh, uh, if, a, if a mathematical model was simple, it had a high probability to be right. But in biology, it's not true. In biology, the probability to find a simple model is very low. And most of the simple models are wrong. So, uh, that's the problem in biology. So, uh, how can you say that a mathematical model in biology can be right, can be wrong? Unfortunately, just experience will give us the kind of uh, turn rule. To, to be able to do that. But for now, we just can do the developed mathematical model and you don't know for sure that the mathematical model is going to work. Uh, the fact that the mathematical model is able to replicate a set of experiments does not mean that it's correct. Such as when you are do, uh, in artificial, you are to work with what's called a black box model. Uh, when you train artificial network, the fact that the artificial network is able to learn the data that you have doesn't mean that artificial network will be able to replicate the new data. So there's no way to know that. So you can call this uh, a reasonable effectiveness somehow, that it's like effective, but you don't know why it's effective. So if you don't know why it's effective, you don't know uh, why we, uh, when it will not be effective. So that's the problem. So, uh, recently I was working a methodology which you can find in my profile in such case called the, the blindness of, uh, of a model. And the, I'm trying to organize because today we have a kind of white box, black box, and gray box, but it's very fuzzy. Not everyone is a 
talk in the same way, in the same level. So people are a little bit fussed about what they mean of that. So white box in general more that you know everything. So they are model that they are you are situated to have the the luxury to know what what the heck is going on. So do you know that what's going on? That's very very rare case. In most of the cases are toy models. So black box are more that you don't know what's going on. You, but you, you have the data, you you want to replicate the data so as a regression model, artificial neural network, first system, artificial intelligence in general. You you, you 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 are able to replicate, but you don't know what exactly what's going on. In the gray box, you know more or less, such as there is a paper that he, I was part of my proposal of PhD in which they apply a stochastic difference in equation alongside classical models. So the part of the model they, they know they use classical model, the other part they don't know they use stochastic model. So it's a kind of double double the double rule. So you know so far uh, you stock a uh, deterministic model. What you don't know you stock as models. This is a gray box. So in general, uh, every bottom-up approach is a white box, and every top-down approach is a black box. But it, the opposite is not that always true because if you are if you are able to understand some, everything, it does not mean that you are doing a, a bottom-up. Neither when you do not understand it means it was a top-down. So uh, uh, I mean the opposite is not always true. Some people like to call this approach gray box um, as a middle way out approach, but not always true because the middle way out approach the, uh, is not necessarily gray box. It just means that you are instead of you top down or bottom up, you use the middle way. We start, you are not so worried about to to start from a point. You choose the point that's the best for you and make backward and for and, and, and go 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 down, go downward, and go upward and so on in the modeling process. If you are not familiar with if if bottom up and top down approach, bottom up approach is a name given when you are making a mathematical model in which you are more worried about the parts. So you understand that thing you are doing. So suppose you have three genes, you want to understand how the three genes can create the function in a tissue. So the, in, in, the, in the bottom up approach, you are going to study each gene, how they, 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 they interact with each other, and how this create a function in the, in the tissue. So you will start from the bottom. In the, in the top down, you start from the up, such as making an experiment with the tissue, such as with light. You are not so worried about the, the chemical process, you are not worried about the gene, you are just worried about the output, so just called top down. Uh, both of the approach has its uh, its advantage, advantage. So that's why people, some people propose the middle way out approach instead of using this bottom up and top down. Use the middle way out approach in order to try to nullify, or at least to get rid of the of the disadvantage and to use the advantage of each of them. So now I'm going to give you two examples. Both of them, they are examples that I'm I'm, I'm familiar with. They um, they somehow this one. Was Direct connect. To, they, they were all of them connect to my thesis of math of science somehow, and uh, I'm going to explain more or less a little bit of them. So this is an example of system biology when applied to gene expression. So system biology again is a philosophy. It's more or less a philosophy. It's a set of ideas of paradigm that help you to to understand biology systems in a new way. So motif. If you go to the dictionary of in English, motif is that kind of a piece of a, of thing that you put in your house to make it more beautiful, such as a, a very beautiful glass from China, so on. It's a kind of a, something to make your house more 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 beautiful, more friendly, and so on. But in biology, motif is very it's a very important pattern. Motif is that repeat itself, such as. When, uh, in, when people study protein, they found that some parts repeat itself all over the protein. So it's called motif. So you can find paper that people are looking for motif in protein. So they look for pattern in protein that repeat itself. Network motif are small, uh, small uh, organization of gene that repeat itself in every species. So if you look for a bacteria, if you look for a human, if you look for a dog or for any other species of fish, they, they somehow they, they, they preserve the same uh, organization of the gene. That is more organization that repeat itself all over the species. It's called network motif. That is structure that repeat itself uh, all over the revolution. So when you are looking for transcription network of, of as people like to call it now gene expression, uh, regulatory gene expression, 
é, you can study for an information point of view or for interaction point of view. For an information point of view, it has been studied by, 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 by molecular dynamics. So the information that she is able to, to, to preserve, so this has been studied by, by molecular molecular biology. So system biology main here, this part main is studying how the interaction make the information. So you have the information and how this information will be useful when it comes to interaction. The second example is a, is a very interesting because I, if you see I have chosen examples uh, in a, in a if I mean in a mini, I believe in a meaningful way. Because the first example you have a very small entity which which are gene. Gene are very small. They are inside the cells. In this case, we are talking about neurons. Neurons are very big, so they are cells. So both of them are so more or less by the same theory. So they show the power of mathematics that you have different entities in the body understood by the same theory, which is called graph or network. So uh, this nice example is from a it's from a book of neuroscience. The, the reference here. So the, uh, this here they show that your brain is activated uh, in several parts at the same time when you do a kind of function. So they show that you cannot understand uh, the, the the brain by just by understanding one neuron, the the working network. So you see that several parts are activated simultaneously to do just one task. So that show that the, there's a network of neuron. That case you had a network of the of the of the network of the, of, of, of the gene. So, but they found as well as a motif. If you, uh, there's a book that I uh, have used on uh, for system biology, but I interested to can let you know, it's a classical book. The, uh, the last chapters of the book, they treat neuron. So they show that motif as well in neuron. So this motif is not, is not, is not peculiar in gene. It's all, it always, it also happened in, in, the, in the neuron. So, thanks a lot for your attention. We are at the end. I hope that the talk was very useful. I'm very sorry for my only academic limitation, but I do my best to learn, to do what I think. If you, if you have comment, you can send me. I'll be extremely glad to, to answer your question. And the, uh, so, in this talk, we have uh, uh, discussed a project which is called the question about mathematics, which the final aim of this course is to create a prototype for a course about mathematics. And the, let's say the hidden object, the hidden aim is that the mathematics can be discussed by everyone, that a biologist that have no clue about mathematics is able to criticize a paper without being afraid of the math, and that maybe a mathematician that is, 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 wants to, learn, to go to mathematics is able to do it in the right way. We saw it's an ambition process. The first step is a prototype that we are going to test, then if it, if it works, you go to, the, to a bigger maybe lecture and so on. So then you have shown two examples that uh, to prove that uh, that mathematics is very important. One is a small scale, which are gene. Uh, let's say the smallest, the smallest scale when it comes to living system. Then we have another one that is not the highest, but is, is higher than gene, which which are uh, neural networks, which are communication between cells. The other one is communication between between gene. In the middle you have communication between protein. Protein as well you have the network of protein and so on. And the, they have the communication between cells, which the, the artificial network is one example. But you can even have more. For example, we have some research show communication between organ, communication between the brain and the and the cell. So there's a huge so networks everywhere. If you have seen that move called the, the island, the island show, shows one, one nice example in fiction, of course. It shows that the, 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 the scientists were unable to produce, to produce organ, artificial organ. That's why they have to do clone. They, they say that the organ were not able to, to function properly if they were not done inside the human. So that shows that it, it's a fiction, I'm not sure how it's based on kind of a real, a real work. But I believe it has more than one sense because there is a huge communication between the system and the organ. You cannot separate the parts. So that's called that one of the big ideas of system biology or the general system thinking. The general system thinking is a set of ideas that was developed more or less at the same time of general theory of relativity, but didn't receive all the attention. The general system thinking is a very powerful, it's a very powerful methodology, it's a very powerful theory trying to make biology and biomedical science, the life science in general, the biomedical science as well in general, as close as possible of physics. Uh, the sense you have a general principle that you are trying to put all systems in the same framework. So it's a very powerful set of ideas. 
So the uh, the next step I'm planning to give you a, a practical example about uh, about how to use Bob Mathematica. I'm going to use Java because it's free, but I can I, I can do the same with MATLAB. So I'm going to give a the basic of programming, then I give you an example, then I give you one problem. So that's the idea to show you that about how Mathematica works. It, of course, it, that will be a toy model because otherwise it would uh, a good by Mathematica model can take years to be developed, like any area. A good, uh, the, the more sophisticated is your is your um, the more sophisticated is your problem, the more time it takes for you to, to learn it and develop. So if you want to teach, you have to give it in a simple way that can be done in a, like in one hour. So you cannot do it like a very complex model. So uh, I, I would like to invite you to follow us in the in the social network. Social networks are important. Uh, I'll be glad, to, of course, that you send feedback and so on. So thanks a lot. Uh, this this is just a tip of the iceberg. You have much more out there. I you, I ask you not to be biased by my my limitation. That you go there and learn by your own. And the, of course, send feedback. That is extremely encouraged and expected.